What's going on Bears fans? Harrison Graham here for Chicago Bears. Now I wanted to bring you guys another video here on Sunday. Three day weekend about to wrap up. I'll be back in the studios tomorrow as uh, tomorrow's August 1st, which means the Bears will play football games this month. Three preseason games. I cannot wait. Now I woke up with just one thought on my mind before we get into today's show and that was FGB. Get the FGBs rolling in the comments section. If you can't stand the Packers, well, F Green Bay, right? Get those FGBs flowing down in the comments section. All right, on today's show, I thought we'd take a look at some training camp winners and losers from the first week at Hallis Hall. Four practices Wednesday through Saturday. Today is an off day before another practice tomorrow, and then the pads go on on Tuesday, so I'm excited for that. But I thought we'd take a look at some winners and some losers up to this point in Bears training camp. And of course, we'll keep things positive to start. Let's start with some training camp winners. I think we got to start with the quarterback, Justin Fields. Um, is this to say he's been perfect? No, of course not. No one at camp has been perfect, but I've been pretty impressed with what I've seen from the Bears' young quarterback, the second-year quarterback, uh, especially this last practice. They ended with some seven-on-seven -seven drills, no incompletions, all completions in that uh, workload there. And even in 11-on-11s and one-on-one -on -one type of drills, He's just throwing a really catchable football, guys, especially down the field. The clips we're seeing from practice, everything we're hearing uh, from reporters with boots on the ground. Uh, it's been a solid start for Justin Fields. Now, has he thrown some interceptions? Sure, some his fault, some aren't. Um, but he's throwing the ball accurately. He's throwing the ball down the field. He's throwing it underneath when he needs to. Uh, he looks like someone who's starting to get more and more comfortable in Luke Getze's offense, and that's a positive sign for everyone involved. He's building chemistry with a couple players in particular, Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet. We'll talk about those two guys later on, uh, but uh, I think that uh, you should be pretty pleased with what we've seen from Justin Fields. It feels more crisp right now than it did during OTAs and minicamp, which certainly had some positive signs then as well, but it was a little more choppy as the offense is still being installed. I think right now he's in a much better place, a more comfortable place, uh, as we get closer and closer to the preseason. So let me ask you guys this. Are you happy with Justin Fields so far in training camp? Based on what you've heard, based on what I've been telling you, just in general, are you happy with the Bears quarterback at this point in time? Obviously, that can change quickly uh, after another week of practice or especially once we get into some uh, games, especially the regular season. But at this exact moment, are you happy with Justin Fields right now? Type Y for yes. Type in for no. Pin comment on today's video. Give me a yes or no on today's show. All right, uh, more training camp winners here. I want to kind of bunch three rookies together here and the day two rookies, day two of the draft, uh, second round picks and third round pick. Uh, the second round picks, uh, we'll start there. Kyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker, the two defensive backs. Start with Gordon, who's been beaten a couple of times, especially by Valus Jones Jr., who we'll talk about in a sec. He's the third rookie here that we're breaking down, but... Kyler Gordon has drawn rave reviews from Matt Eberflus and especially Alan Williams talking about the athleticism, just the twitchiness. And I think the reason he's in the winner category is because they're trusting him to play multiple positions right now. He's playing outside corner and nickelback. And not only is he playing multiple spots, he's excited to do so. When they approached him and said, hey, we're going to play you at nickel some, he reportedly smiled, lit up, and said, yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Uh, and I think a big reason for that is is Matt Eberflus has talked a lot about how important this nickel position is on this Bears defense. And I think this is a pretty interesting development to follow moving forward because I think the Bears are in an interesting spot with what they do at corner. And uh, I want to give Adam Hogan, Adam Johns credit for this. They brought this up on the Hogan Johns podcast. If you haven't listened to those guys before, go check them out. They bring good insight. Um, basically, you could go one or two ways. You could start Jalen Johnson and Kyler Gordon at outside corner with either Tavon Young or Thomas Graham Jr. at nickel. Or you could start Jalen Johnson at outside uh, with Kyler Gordon in the slot. And then probably Kendall Vilder as the other outside guy. I would prefer Gordon at the outside, or CB2, and then uh, Young or Graham at nickel. But... On the flip side, if nickel is that critical in this defense, and if Gordon can move around some, depending on the packages, play outside or nickel, if he is ready for that responsibility, 
Maybe that's the way to go because if nickel is the most important corner spot in the secondary, then maybe you should put the guy there that you invested in with your first draft pick of this regime. It's going to be very fascinating to see how this plays out. So you've got Kyler Gordon moving around, showing off the athleticism. Uh, yes, getting beat some, but uh, uh, taking on that responsibility. I think that has to make him a training camp winner up to this point. Okay, Jaquan Brisker had a nice interception, second or third practice. Always around the football. Kid's a stud. I mean, there's nothing else to say. The guy signs his contract the night before training camp starts. He's ready to rock and roll. Um, I think, at worst, he's a average to above average starter as a rookie. At best, he could have a Pro Bowl type season. I think he's going to be really good for many years to come in this defense. I think he's going to be a better version of Adrian Amos, uh, who didn't create a ton of turnovers. I think Brisker will. Uh, I'm excited about this kid. I said it a few weeks ago. I'll say it again. Uh, I think a bold prediction is that by the end of the year, we could be saying Brisker is the best player in the secondary. And this is a secondary that has a chance to be really, really good if things come together. So he's having a nice start to camp. And then Bayless Jones Jr., we just mentioned, he's beaten Kyler Gordon a couple of times, showed off some nice hands and tracking ability on a couple of deep balls from Justin Fields. We heard early on in camp how... Uh, you know, showed off the footwork, a couple of double moves as well to free himself uh, for some touchdowns. So that's uh, that's good stuff for Bayless Jones Jr. I think we knew he'd be a guy that had good speed and good with the ball in space, but the fact that the route running appears to be a little better than we probably thought, I think that's a good sign. I'll be fascinated to see if he ends up being this team's punt returner as well. But the three rookies that you drafted in the second and third round, Kyler Gordon, Jaquan Brisker, and Bayless Jones Jr., all appear to be producing early and appear to be guys that are going to have an impact from day one. So I think that's a very, very good sign. I mentioned two other guys earlier that I want to include as winners here, Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet. Um, listen, the rapport with Justin Fields is real. It appears that those... Off-season reps were Fields, had Mooney and Komet come down to Georgia to get some work in, have paid off because I think it's clear that Fields trusts those two guys the most right now uh, as weapons uh, on the offense. Him and Mooney have great chemistry. Mooney has made some highlight reel catches. We know what he brings to the table. Great route runner, great speed. I think uh, the one thing he probably needed to work on uh, was just you know just the fo cleaning up kind of the, the focus drops. He had a few drops last year that were just unnecessary. Uh, I think he's cleaning that up. Um, Cole Komet, you know, a next step for him was, you know, make some of those tougher contested catches. Had a nice uh, back shoulder catch up the seam uh, in one of the earlier practices. Had a, a good uh, catch uh, on the left sideline one day as well. I think that was nice to see. Uh, for him also. And I think as a blocker, something he's talked about, which the pads aren't on yet, but uh, I think up to this point, he's taking pride in becoming a better blocker too. So Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, uh, you know, I said this too. I think these will be the top two receiving in terms of yards on this team this year. Mooney should be well over a thousand yards. Uh, Komet could be that number two guy, seven, 800 yards. I think that's very much a possibility for him find a way to get into the end zone. That's going to be a difference in becoming, you know, a decent starting caliber tie and into a pretty good one here in the National Football League. Before we get to some Bears training camp losers, hit that subscribe button here on Bears. Now we will continue to give you guys the latest training camp updates, news, rumors, whatever is circulating around this team, injuries uh, like Lucas Patrick, who we'll get to in a sec. Uh, we'll have you guys covered, so subscribe. Whether we're in the studio or I'm at my house, I will continue uh, to provide the latest updates. Okay, let's go to some training camp losers. Let's start with Lucas Patrick. Nothing that he did wrong, but the reality is he suffered a hand injury. It sounds like it's a fractured thumb, broken thumb, whatever it is. Ian Rappaport says should be about a six-week injury, which kind of puts him right on the border for week one. It's going to be very, very close. I actually you know, just kind of pulled out the calendar and looked at it. Six weeks is like right at the weekend of week one when they face the 49ers, so... You know, let's say it's a six-week injury. I would say, at worst, he'll be back week two. At best, he is still good to go for that week one game. What it does tell us, though, is that if it is that timetable, got to miss the rest of camp, not going to play in the preseason. Um, and that has its repercussions because uh, that center quarterback relationship is important. Now that him and Justin Fields have had a lot of reps this offseason, none with pads on, though. Um, so you're losing out on that, which is a bummer. Uh, the good news is, is it happened 
this week instead of three weeks from now. If this happens three weeks from now, maybe you're talking about a guy starting on IR to start the season. I don't think that will be the case. I think at most, barring a setback, you're talking about a player that will miss maybe one regular season game. So not the end of the world. Obviously, you want this offensive line to build that continuity, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, Matt Eberflus talked about it. Uh, how, how are you going to respond? How are you going to respond to these type of things? Who's going to step up? Well, uh, the day he got injured, Doug Kramer stepped in there and played. Sam Mustafer uh, during the next couple of practices, got some reps as the starting center. So we'll see out of those two guys who steps up more and is ready to start at that position while Lucas Patrick is out. I'm starting to wonder if it could be Mustafer. When I saw Kramer going that first day, uh, I was thinking, okay, Kramer's the backup. But I think you know they may value Mustafer's experience here, uh, and especially if it's going to be a situation where it could be a game where Patrick misses, you may go Sam Mustafer, a guy who has 24 starts under his belt, 25 starts, whatever it is, uh, to come in there and start the one game uh, because he's done that before. So keep an eye on that. We'll continue to monitor Lucas Patrick, but got to go in that loser's category because uh, he is injured. Tevin Jenkins. Listen, the more days that go by, I think the worse we can and should feel about where the Bears are with Tevin Jenkins. Uh, was the was out there the first day of camp, was working with the twos again, just like he was during minicamp and OTAs. Haven't seen him since. Matt Eberflew says he's working through something with the trainer, said he woke up one day with something, offered no context into what that is. Is it a back issue again? Is it a different injury? We thought maybe that first day he missed, maybe it could be an illness because reporters did see him uh, before practice. He just wasn't out there thinking, oh, okay, maybe he's sick and just taking a day off. Nope, he missed practices two, three, and four after being out there for the first one. And again, you know, I don't want to be negative, but the reality is, is, you know, this draft pick up to this point has not paid off. Missed most of last year with that uh, back surgery that he had to have. And this year, uh, was working with the backups in the offseason program for the most part and has hardly been at training camp. So the reality is is uh, it's not uh, it's not a good situation for Tevin Jenkins right now. So hopefully he gets back. Uh, I think he is a player that if he's right, when the pads go on, he could get back into the mix to start at right tackle. But he's got to get out there. He's got to be healthy. He's got to show this regime something. I, I get the feeling that this regime of Ryan Poles, Matt Eberflus, Chris Morgan, the offensive line coach, they're not impressed with Tevin Jenkins up to this point. So it's up to him to change their mind. One more training camp loser. And not because we've heard anything. I think it's because we haven't. Dante Pettis. I haven't heard his name once by anyone <laughs> at Bears training camp. That tells me he's not making any plays. Now, maybe that's not true. But the reality is, is we're hearing a lot about Bayless Jones. A lot about Darnell Mooney. Even a few things about Byron Pringle, Equidemia, St. Brown, Nikhil Harry. Uh, we're hearing stuff. I'm not hearing anything about Dante Pettis, who is firmly on the roster bubble and a guy that uh, could be in trouble coming off the Nikhil Harry trade. I think trading for Harry makes, makes it tougher for Pettis to earn a spot. It's one more guy to compete with. So I think heading into week two of camp here, starting tomorrow on Monday, you know, you, you got to start making plays, man. You know, it's competition. Even Isaiah Coulter had a 60-yard touchdown the other day uh, on a nice little uh, – uh, just slot go route, basically, that Fields was able to hit him on. Pettis, nowhere to be found. Uh, and to be fair, neither has Tajay Sharp. Haven't heard much from him either. So, you know, we talked about it coming in. This wide receiver competition beyond Mooney and kind of take Pringle and um, Valus Jones out of it because we know those two guys are going to make the team as well. Who's going to emerge? Doesn't look like Dante Pettis early on is that guy. So I'm going to keep an eye on him heading into the second week of training camp uh, as we continue to progress here. Give me a training camp winner and loser so far. Biggest training camp winner, biggest training camp loser down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. I would say my biggest loser is Tevin Jenkins. Uh, I would say my biggest winner, probably Darnell Mooney. He looks like this team's clear best player on offense. Um, so I'll leave it at that right now. You, you guys let me know. Biggest training camp winner and loser so far from Hallis Hall as we are underway here at training camp. All right. 
Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Remember, get those FGBs going in the comment section. More videos to come here on the channel as we get closer and closer to that preseason opener against the Kansas City Chiefs on August 13th. All right, I'm your host, Harrison Graham. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on those notifications. You can find me on social media at HGramNFL on both Twitter and Instagram. That is at HGramNFL. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. We'll see you guys tomorrow from the studios uh, here on Bears Now.